Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. Today I want to talk to you, and I want you to listen to the word of the Lord today. There's a great move of God that's going on and it's coming, an even greater move than what we're seeing now. It's coming to the church. And I'm thankful, and, I'm, and I'm, I really am, to the Lord. Uh, I'm, you know, if I ever came into the church, if I ever came into the sanctuary, I don't know about you, but all I wanted to do, I just wanted to be in the presence of God when I first got saved. You know, I, I didn't care if I ever preached or taught. or I just wanted to be in God's presence, so I, I, that's what I did. I just would go off, and, and you know, I, I would stay in, in His presence, and and everything that the Lord has done in our church is a reflection of all of us, not a reflection of me, but of all of us, of all of your prayers, listen, and, and of all the time that you've been willing to spend. You know, nobody, nobody sees that, Daryl. Nobody sees that, but you know what? But Maybe as far as people, but God sees it. And God sees all of you today. And, you know, and that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to encourage you because the church... You know, when you're talking about America being under attack, the truth is, is not really America's under attack. The church, us, are under attack because one of these days, I'm going to tell you, one of these days, I don't know how much more we're going to see or, or what's, how much more is going to happen. But I do know this. I do know that God is speaking by His Spirit. And I know what He's saying. I know exactly what He's saying. Now, I don't know the time frame. I don't know all how the events are going to take place or, or what's going to happen as far as in order. But I do know what's coming. There's bad things coming and there's good things coming. The greatest thing that we, we better be ready for, we better be looking up, we better make sure that we're ready. One way or the other, we better make sure that we're ready. And that's why that I keep going back. To, today's no different. Last night, all night long, and I've, I've been in you know, ministry quite a while, I've never dreamed all night ever about a, a message but I did last night and God has been speaking to me about Samson and, and the end time speaking of the church and about the time that you and I live in and I just want to say this as much as I love you all and as much as I, I want to have fun and we, we're going to do our best we're living in perilous times there's no getting away from it there's no getting around don't matter where you go what state you go to, what church you go to, what denomination, if, you have, if, if it's what you, it doesn't matter, the battle's going to be there. The, the devil's going to be there, God's going to be there, because we're living in the end time. And so after you hear this message today, you'll really maybe understand a little bit deeper insight from the heart of God, but um, I'm, I'm excited this morning because God is speaking. That's all I care about. I'm glad... That I told him a long time ago, I said, God, whatever you do, this should be our prayer. God, whatever you do, do not quit talking to me. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, don't shut up your mouth. Don't shut up. Come on. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't shut your, your mercies or your compassion up to me. Whatever you do, whatever it takes, God, don't quit speaking to me. Amen. Amen. Father, today I thank you for your word. And God, I ask you to bless it. And God, I give you the praise for this word today. God, today, as you speak this word, I pray you would encourage your people. And Lord, I glorify you and I praise you, Father, for this revelation of your word. God, this is your word. And I'm thankful, God. I'm thankful to be in a church that people have faith, that people believe. I'm thankful for the work that you're doing in them and through them. And the great things that you're going to continue to do, God. And what's coming this summer, if you tarry, God, for the Bible school. And God, I thank you right now that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And God, I thank you that your spirit, God, is being poured out upon this people, upon this service. And God, we give you the praise for this word now. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Samson. Samson is what I named my dog. 
When we got our dog, uh, his name, uh, the, the vet had him as Reno. I don't like Reno, Nevada. So I decided that I would change his name, and I felt like the Lord told me to change his name to Samson. That may have not been a very good idea because that dog has broke so many, I mean, he's broken uh, like aircraft cable uh, things. I don't know if they're aircraft cable, but he's real thick, you know, those long braided, he's broke two of them. He's broke every leash that we've had and, and collar until this last one. We got this great big red one, and thank God we got him bound by the blood because it's red, big chain on it. But Samson is, shows up in the book of Judges. And for, for you all, I mean, I, you know, you think that everybody knows Samson was a, first of all, his birth was miraculous. An angel visited his mom and kind of like the same with Mary and told him he was going to have a son. He would never to, uh, he would be a Nazarite from his mother's womb. And so Samson was born into a, an era, into a time where Israel needed a champion. And Israel needed somebody to overcome the Philistines that were destroying their people that were coming against the people of God. But this particular passage of Scripture today that I want to start off with is I want to talk about the prophetic significance of Samson in the last days that we're living in. And so I want to read, and I want to read uh, beginning with Judges. It's in, in the book of Judges in the 14th chapter beginning with verse 1. That's the book of Judges, the 14th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Now listen, I want you to stay with me because this thing is going to get good. It's going to get really good in just a minute. Judges chapter 14, beginning with verse 1. The title of, 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 uh, the title of my message this morning is Samson's First Love. Samson's first love. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his mother and his, I'm sorry, his father and his mother and said, I've seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? For among all thy people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleadeth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at the time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, watch this, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon, came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hands. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. Now look at verse 8. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the inside of the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother. Let me go, let me go back to verse 8. I, I want to go, let me reel back to verse 8. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and he went on eating, and came to his father and mother, and gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Let me tell you right now, Jesus has enough honey for everybody in this room. Amen. Jesus has everything that you and I need in this room. God has done everything that we need done in this generation. God is moving in this generation and God is not only pouring out His Spirit now, right now, but God is moving upon people that will follow Him. You know, the key to being blessed by God is that you have a made-up mind and that you follow Him. Come on, somebody. And you know, and you, know and you can go in the world, you can go as far as you want to go, you can have everything you want, but when it comes to the end of it, kind of like me and my brother were talking about, Daryl, 
When it comes right down to the end of it, there's nothing there that's going to satisfy. There's nothing except Jesus that's going to satisfy. You know, yesterday, even when Michael's baseball team, I noticed some of the looks on their faces, even though they won that ball game. I'm just going to be led of the Lord. I feel like I need to say this. Even after they had won that ball game, I mean, that's all that there was. I mean, they, it's like, you know, it's like, that's it. I mean, there's, there's no farther. I mean, they've done the greatest thing in the world they could do, the greatest record they can have, yet, you know, on the inside, you're still empty. Somebody say amen. amen. But God began to speak to me about the, the times that you and I live and what is happening and why that the church, listen, this is the most important part of my message, why that the church is under attack, why or we, me and you under attack. The other day, I had somebody say, I feel, I feel kind of oppressed. I feel like that I'm being pushed down. Anybody feel that way? You feel like something's just not right. And, and there, that, that's right. There is something that's just not right. And what you're picking up on is you're picking up on the end times. You're picking up on what's going on in the spiritual realm, what's happening in the realm that you and I, unfortunately, God won't let us look in that realm all the time. But God is still revealing to us what is happening by His Spirit. And aren't you glad to be part of the end time church? Somebody give our God praise. But we're seeing in this particular passage of Scripture the thing that's happening in America and, and to the church. When I'm talking about Samson's first love, I want to go back and I want you to see what he loved. He loved the wrong thing. Number one, the Lord, all last night, he began to speak to me in my dreams. He was speaking to me about Samson all night. I mean, literally all night long, I tossed and I turned. And as I woke up this morning, he began to show me. There's so much that I want to show you if you just need to pray that I can get it all out. But as you see Samson, you see him leaving. And this is the way that America has done. Number one, we have left our first love. Samson began to love something that he never should have loved. And you know, and you know, I was talking to Jesse today, you know, and we can get up on the mountain and we can look down into a valley, we can look down from far off, and it may look good down in that valley, but when you go down in that valley, you don't know if you're going to be able to come back out of that valley or not. So I just want to encourage you, I don't care how good it looks, I don't care how mighty it might smell, you know, how, how, how pretty it might, might, might uh, uh, appear to you, I would tell you, let's stay up on the mountain, amen. Let's don't go down in the valley, but Samson made up his mind that he wasn't going to take a daughter from one of the brethren. He was going to go and chase the wrong thing. That's what's wrong with the church today. We've left our first love. Amen. We don't preach the truth anymore. We don't talk about heaven uh, uh, being real and hell being hot. You know, we, we don't talk about the power of God anymore. We don't talk about living right, being sanctified, living a holy life, living for the one that died. We don't talk, we don't talk about how God still desires for us to weep between the porch and the altar. Amen. But no, but what we want to talk about is, uh, is how good we are and how, how much better we can do in ourselves. But God says without him we can absolutely do nothing. So we need to stay up on the mountain. The valley looks good. I promise you that it does. Satan will sell you a bill of goods. He'll want you to move from your place. Let me tell you what. There's no drug, no alcohol, no amount of money, no, no, no woman, no man, nobody that will satisfy. Glory be to God. I'm preaching this morning. Nobody will satisfy like Jesus will satisfy. You, you will be empty again and again and again and again until you realize that I've made up my mind. I'm going to follow the one with the nail scars in his hands and my God in the nail scar. I'm going to follow him if I, it costs me my life, whatever it takes. I'm going to follow him all the way because I know the day draws near that the trumpet's going to sound and the dead in Christ are going to rise and then the church, hallelujah, is going to, my God, is going to come up, hallelujah, and go up and be with the that we're looking for. But there is a battle that is going on right now. All, all day long in the church today, the Lord's been telling me we're living in perilous times. Perilous times. Now, I want to share. This is totally different. But I want to share. Off, this is not in my notes, but this is what I feel led. There's been a lot of people have asked me, even somebody this morning asked me, Mark, what? What's all the deal with all these earthquakes? And what's the deal with the volcanoes? And people have been saying they've been hearing these noises all over the world.